This is the 2018 Toyota Land Cruiser. This truck has been in the States in one form or another since 1951. Now notice how I call it a truck because underneath the body, unlike those sissy crossovers that everyone loves so much, this is a real truck with a ladder type frame, a big burly V8, and the ability to tow up to 8,200 pounds. Now this current generation has been in the States since 2008, and honestly, Toyota hasn't changed it much over the years, except for 2016 where it got a pretty big refresh. This week I'm testing out the 2018 model. Does it live up to the Land Cruiser name? That's so we're here to find out. As I said earlier, this generation Land Cruiser came out back in 2008, and over the years, Toyota really hasn't made too many changes. In fact, this generation has gone through two mid-model year changes. 2016 was the last one where Toyota kind of changed the front end a little bit. You can see it's got this new chrome bar that goes across the headlight, which by the way, all Land Cruisers now come standard with LED headlights, LED high beams and low beams, uh, and an LED daytime running light. Um, the overall, the look is very conservative. Uh, I think this truck honestly hasn't changed much in its look, uh, and I think it's time for Toyota to really update this and make it look a lot more modern. I do like the LED fog lights and you can see uh, with this front fascia it's got really good approach and departure angles which is great for off-roading. Uh, if you guys look at the Lexus version that has a slightly different front end that kind of affects that now. The wheels and tires are very small for a new vehicle. They're only 18 inches uh, but because it has so much sidewall here, it can really absorb impact, so it's not a really harsh ride, and you can actually take it off-road, which is one of the things, or one of the selling points with the Land Cruiser. Now, this is a pretty big vehicle. It competes with vehicles like the Ford Expedition and the Chevy Tahoe, uh, and you can also see how big it is from this side. I mean, it's got a traditional boxy shape. Now, dimensionally, even though this is the most expensive SUV, it's not the largest in Toyota's lineup. The wheelbase is actually 112 inches long. It has changed in size since the uh, first generation Land Cruiser. Overall length's about 195 inches long. It's about a foot shorter than a Toyota a Sequoia. So if you want the biggest SUV Toyota makes, you got to go for the Sequoia. Now when you look at the rear of the Land Cruiser, Toyota also update this in 2016. It honestly looks like the Lexus. You have LED taillights, a lot of chrome in here. I like the traditional V8 badge and then you can see here it's got really good departure angles to make this vehicle look uh, very traditional, very boxy. Now the tailgate, this has always been a traditional Land Cruiser thing. Unfortunately, the tailgate isn't power. I'm, I really have an issue with that. Um, it's a manual tailgate, which you know should be okay, but uh, honestly, I like how it folds down here and it kind of gives you this um, tailgate area where you can sit. But when you look at the cargo area here, you can see uh, it has around 16 cubic feet of space. You fold down all the seats, you get around 80 cubic feet of space, which is significantly less. The Sequoia gives you about 121 cubic feet of space. And you can see here the seats, they fold down in a special way. Um, if you pull this lever here, you can see they actually fold to the side. Let me move this over here. If you pull this seat here, the seat actually folds over to the side. And if you guys get the Lexus version, the seats will actually be power folding. So there is a reason for the convenience factor uh, to go for the Lexus version, but it does eat into the cargo area. So just keep that in mind. If you guys want the most space on the inside, you need to go for the Sequoia. So when you first approach the Land Cruiser, you can easily tell just how large this vehicle is. And here's the current key fob for the Land Cruiser. It's the key fob that you've seen on some of the older Toyota products. It comes standard with the smart key access system with push button start. My tester also has an accessory uh, remote start, which you can access by pushing the lock button a couple times uh, in succession with the unlock button to get the vehicle to start up. But uh, as you can see, when you approach the Land Cruiser, looking at the door handle here, it has like this area here with two ridges. Touch it with the key on you, it'll lock the door for you. Uh, although the mirrors don't electrically fold, although they are power folding. When you unlock the doors, just touch the back of the handle and that unlocks the door for you. Now looking at the inside of the current generation Land Cruiser, you can see my tester has a really nicely uh, finished interior with the brown leather. Um, you can also go for a black or beige leather, I believe, but I really like this contrast with the uh, silver exterior. Uh, and you can see all Land Cruisers will have the running boards here. There's a nice little grab handle here. I mean, this vehicle has nine and a half inches of ground clearance and you can tell when you first open up the door, it's kind of a higher step in height. Now getting inside the vehicle, um, it's really easy to get in and out of, uh, at least for me, uh, and I'm pretty short. And then when you shut the door, uh, it sounds okay. Uh, it doesn't sound quite as solid as some of the um, competitors like a Range Rover that I've tested now. To start the vehicle up, uh, just put your foot on the brake and push the button here to fire up the engine. 
And you can see the steering wheel is power tilt and telescoping. It kind of remembers where your last position was because it has a three person memory function. You can see here the gauges, they look very similar to the last um, refreshed Tundra that I showed you guys. Uh, they're a really clean set of gauges. You can see lots of auxiliary um, our sources here you can see there's a battery volt there's an oil pressure temperature um, gauge and um, there's a small little helper screen in the center here which is customizable um, based on pushing the buttons here on the steering wheel um, I think it's kind of time for Toyota to go to an all LCD display but uh, for those of you who prefer this more simple approach uh, that's really easy to read uh, you're gonna really appreciate that this uh, this vehicle does also give you a nice digital speedo in case you don't really like how um, the numbers are kind of slanted in a chronograph style watch or the traditional speedo but looking at the rest of the interior here, you can see overall the materials in here are pretty good for a Toyota. I mean, the dashboard here, or I'm sorry, the door panel is soft touch. There's some um, matte finish wood grain. There's some silver painted plastic, although I kind of wish it was more aluminum. I don't believe this is real aluminum trim. Uh, there's a nice uh, soft leather stitch area here. All the windows are one touch automatic for all four. Kind of expect that. This is a pretty expensive truck. Um, the steering wheel, it's basically the same steering wheel I believe that I showed you on the Tundra with some faux stitching here for the airbag cover. Lots of buttons here, switches. Uh, Toyota added their Toyota Safety Sense P to the Land Cruiser for 2016, so you do have adaptive cruise control, forward collision alert, uh, lane departure alert. No active steering assist, and the vehicle does not come to a full stop when you have the adaptive cruise control on. It actually will shut off at like 20 miles an hour, which is kind of annoying. The dashboard is a little bit on the cheap side, especially considering this is an expensive vehicle. Now it is soft touch plastic and everything fits together well, but at this point I would be expecting it to be more leather stitched. The Lexus version gives you that for like another five grand extra. Um, I mean, again, I'm kind of nitpicking here. Uh, overall, they did refresh the interior for 2016, but I think that it could have used a little bit more premium materials. I do like the soft leather that's down here that is stitched on this little portion here. Uh, there's nice big knobs for tuning and volume, climate control. Your lots of um, buttons here for the nine inch Toyota end tune infotainment system. It is an inch bigger than what I've seen in other Toyota products. Um, it has, you know, the typical GPS function. Uh, the nav display isn't really too much to, you know, get excited about. It's very standard Toyota stuff here. Um, your sources, there's no Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but you do have satellite radio, AM, FM, HD radio, CD, uh, CD player still, of course. You have four zone automatic climate control. Uh, you also have heated and cooled seats with a heated steering wheel, which is definitely nice. Uh, this over here controls the eight-speed automatic transmission. Uh, it does have a manual shift mode and a sport mode, uh, although it doesn't actually aff affect the suspension or the steering. When you put the vehicle into reverse, uh, Toyota does give you a 360 backup camera uh, with four cameras. It has front and rear parking sensors, no automatic parallel parking. And again, the qu camera quality is not the best. It's kind of just class competitive with other Toyota products. Over here, if you open this up, there is a wireless charging pad for your phone if it is compatible uh, and that was new again for 2016 because the Land Cruiser is actually a real truck you have lots of switches switches and knobs here for the four-wheel drive system it's a full-time four-wheel drive system always defaults to high a four high there's also a low range um, this right here is Toyota's turn assist where if you're off-roading the vehicle it'll actually kind of cut the turning circle in half to help you navigate some tight corners you have um, downhill assist control or crawl control where you have all these different modes that I've shown you on the Tacoma uh, we can go from like a rocks, uh, you can go to a mogul, a sand mode, a mud mode. Um, this is a power button here, which is kind of like a sport button. This is an old school style button, which I've shown you guys in the uh, new Tacoma as well. This will make the vehicle start, the transmission start on second. It has this locking center diff. I'm not sure what these buttons here, which are unused. It may just be for a feature that we don't get here uh, in America. You have uh, pretty traditional cup holders here. I'm surprised there's not really much storage here. I took this vehicle on a long road trip uh, and I was shocked to find that I did run out of storage here when this gets taken up, especially for something that's so big right here. So Toyota needs to work on that for the next generation. There is a small little storage area right here, which honestly isn't very big. Um, and if you put something that's really tall, it'll kind of get crushed by the lid. I really like the um, refrigerator that's in the center console here. Uh, when you push this button here, it uses the air conditioning and it does a really good job with keeping this cold, honestly. I was able to keep a few drinks in here ice cold on long trips, which is nice, although it does eat into the space a little bit of the center console because it's very large, but it takes up the, the space. You can see it's actually sealed here, so it does keep your drinks pretty cold. The seats also, I really like the seats. They're very comfortable. The leather is super supple and soft. It reminds me of a Lexus. They're heated and cooled. I kind of wish they were massaging seats. I don't think the Lexus offers that either. But on a eight and a half hour road trip, I found the seats to be really supportive. Never really got tired of driving this vehicle. Uh, the glove compartment, it's also huge. It's two tier storage. Uh, it's not lined with 
felt, but it is damped. It has plenty of space there um, for your um, owner's manual. The steering wheel is heated, as I said before. It has the wood grain on here. Um, I like the steering wheel. It's a nice um, electric power steering, which or hydraulic power steering, which it does have decent feedback. And I also like how I can rest my hand here on long trips. It was really nice to have on a longer road trip. The sunroof, it's standard. It's just a standard size moonroof, no pano sunroof, of course. Um, but overall, the interior of the Land Cruiser, while it is nice for a Toyota, I just don't think it has the $90,000, you know, nice uh, materials that I was expecting, especially in this price class, uh, when you, especially when you can, you can get like a Mercedes GLS or a Range Rover uh, for similar money. Looking at the rear seat or the second row of the Land Cruiser, you can see it offers plenty of space. Um, this is a vehicle that can easily accommodate three across in the second row because it's such a wide vehicle. Uh, and of course, the step in height is high again, but Toyota gives you a nice little grab handle here to kind of help you get in and out of this vehicle, especially for a short folks like myself. Now, when you shut the door here, it sounds okay. Uh, reminds me again of the front seats. The materials here are still soft touch, which is nice. It's padded right here, uh, and then it's one touch automatic uh, for the uh, rear, rear windows as well. Now, I wanna talk about the uh, space back here because I'm noticing there isn't too much foot space underneath this front seat, which is surprising. Um, I could barely get my foot underneath here, and the legroom is good, and I like the fact that there is a flat floor here so you can actually sit three people across. The seat back, as you can see, it does recline slightly, um, from a little lever on the side, uh, which does make it a little bit more comfortable. The seats themselves don't slide forward and back though, like some competitors, so I can't actually slide the bench forward to give the third row passengers a little bit more leg room. There is a nice little armrest right here uh, with um, your remote control for the entertainment system. There is two cup holders here as well, a little bit of storage. Although when you have this up here, it's kind of eating into the space, but when you close this up again, you have a nice little soft armrest. Now, uh, my tester has the optional rear seat entertainment system which again, it's all turned on from uh, this little remote control here. And this is not a touch screen. You actually have to use the remote control here to uh, access this. And you have, you can see four different sets of wireless headphones that my tester has, which is nice. The screen itself is big, honestly. These, this actually is larger than the front screen and the front, I believe they're 11 inches. Um, so it's definitely nice that Toyota, you know, give you, gives you this function. Right now I have the rear seat kind of locked out uh, from this, but you know, if you guys have kids and you want something that looks, or to kind of keep them occupied on a long trip and you don't feel like getting them an iPad, uh, this is definitely going to work out for you uh, if you guys are looking to you know, get that kind of feature. But um, the headroom back here is also good. You have a nice suede Alcantara on the headliner and then some nice LED lighting uh, in the cabin to kind of light up the interior at night. To access the third row of the Land Cruiser, you have to pull on this lever right here and that will flip the seat forward, um, not electrically or anything like that. It does have kind of a hydraulic to assist you in opening it. Uh, but when you can see to get back here, it's a little bit of a smaller squeeze, although Toyota does give you a nice little step here to help you do that. And when you get back here, you'll find that the space is definitely on the smaller side. Because the Land Cruiser does not have an independent rear suspension like the Sequoia, the seat floor or the floor is raised up significantly so your knees are kind of in the air. And I'm surprised to say that this is an eight passenger because the body's so wide you can fit a middle passenger here, although this is pretty cramped already and I'm pretty short so I wouldn't want to sit back here for longer than a few or an hour at most. Now back here, materials all hard touch plastic which I kind of expected. There are two cup holders here um, and then when you sit back here. Let me go over to this side so you can see if this is up, my knees are basically up against this and you could, again, somebody my height could definitely fit back here if you wanted to put three across, but it would definitely be a little bit of a tight fit. I like the fact that Toyota still gives you some grab handles back here, so they were thinking about that, but overall, if you want more rear seats or third row space, you gotta go for the uh, Sequoia or the Expedition uh, because it gives you that uh, independent rear suspension. Now under the hood of the Land Cruiser, Toyota makes it pretty simple. There's only one engine choice here in the US. It's the company's tried and true 5.7 liter naturally aspirated V8. Now Toyota has been building this V8 engine for a few years now. It's the same motor in the Tundra. In the Land Cruiser, it makes the same output, 381 horsepower and 401 pound feet of torque. Now the difference between this and a Tundra that I just showed you guys a couple months ago, um, this has an eight speed automatic versus the six speed. Toyota put the eight speed in this car for 2016. Now you might be thinking, oh, there's an eight speed, maybe it gets good gas 
gas mileage? No, the gas mileage actually didn't improve when Toyota did that. It still gets 13 in the city, 18 on the highway. At least the engine only requires regular, uh, but when you combine that with a pretty small 24 and a half gallon gas tank, you're only looking at like a 300 mile range uh, for fill-ups even on the highway. Now this is a pretty heavy vehicle. It weighs just under 6,000 pounds. It will tow about uh, 8,200 pounds, so it is at least giving you that ability. Um, but you're not gonna buy this obviously to, you know, get the Greeny Awards, that's what a Prius is for. But let's get out on the road and see how it all performs. If you look at Toyota's actual truck lineup, it's getting up there in the age. The oldest or the newest vehicle they have is the Tacoma, which was launched in 2016. And honestly, it was barely all new. If you guys look at the actual V8 powered larger SUVs and trucks, they're seriously old. And the Land Cruiser uh, is the flagship of the entire Toyota truck lineup. I actually haven't had a chance to drive a Land Cruiser in a long time. I don't even remember driving this Series 200 when it first came out in 2008. I just really remember driving a Series 100 a long Long time ago uh, and this is a vehicle that will appeal to the traditionalists it honestly the first time I got behind or the moment I got behind the wheel it feels tank like it feels super heavy it feels soft it feels like I'm driving a truck from 10 years ago because it basically is that's not to say this is a bad driving vehicle I noticed immediately that it's a very smooth truck it's very powerful it has a really great transmission and I think a lot of you may still be impressed uh, when you get behind the wheel of this thing Now the Land Cruiser it comes with only one engine here in the States, the 5.7 iForce V8 that I've shown you guys in the Tundra. It moves out the truck well. Now zero to 60 times should be around 7.2 seconds, which honestly, it feels a lot faster than that. This engine makes plenty of horsepower, plenty of torque. It's got a new eight-speed automatic this year, which honestly does a really good job at swapping gears. I did find that sometimes it seeks out top gear uh, way too much, and you have to kind of floor your the, the pedal down to the floor to get it to downshift, or you can also put it into this ECT power mode, and it'll kind of help you with that. It'll leave a downshift if you guys are braking hard, which is nice. There's no paddles on the wheel or anything like that. You do have a manual mode on the transmission, but you can see here, Lots of smooth, effortless power, and that's kind of what I expect uh, in a vehicle like this. It, it feels very comparable to the last GMC Yukon with the 6.2 that I drove. I haven't driven the new Expedition um, or Navigator yet, which have the new EcoBoost V6 with the 10-speed auto. I imagine that's going to probably be the new benchmark. Um, but really, it's a really nice driving truck that has lots of traditional V8 noises. Now, that beep you heard earlier was the lane departure alert. It doesn't actually have active steering assist, uh, which I find it to be mostly annoying than helpful. Um, Toyota, because this has hydraulic power steering, not electric, does not able. they're not able to actually add the part where it corrects your steering when you cross over the lane. That's another reason why it doesn't have full speed range adaptive cruise control, because it has a traditional handbrake here, as opposed to the electronic parking brake like some of the newer Toyotas. And because this vehicle comes standard with permanent four-wheel drive, there's not really any drama when you put your foot down. It just has lots of smooth power, although the engine does get a little bit noisier when you start pushing it into the, the high revs. Um, some of the competitor's engine I notice is, are, I noticed are a little bit smoother, a little bit quieter. I imagine the EcoBoost V6 in the Expedition is probably one of the quietest, and it has the most torque in the segment. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> but it's interesting because this vehicle feels kind of old school in the fact that when I put my foot down, the front end will kind of lift up and the steering gets a little bit numb. So it's it definitely is a little bit fun in that regard, although it can be a little disconcerting uh, for some drivers who aren't used to that. It's just kind of a car that it seriously takes you back in time. This is not something that feels especially modern when you're driving it. It just is a very nice driving vehicle. I mean, it's pretty quiet in here. The road noise is very hushed, aside from just some engine noise. Um, it's a really easy car to take on a long road trip. Um, but you know, you really feel this car's truck chassis when you start getting it out on the road because the ride, um, or, you know, it's, it's very, it has a very soft suspension. It uh, feels very cumbersome. I mean, the steering is hydraulic and it's super slow. <laughs> when you start turning the wheel, it seriously has so much body lean. Uh, it just it just feels like I'm driving like a, t a Tundra at, at times, but just a little bit shorter. It's a little bit easier to drive than that 2018 Tundra. Um, but overall, you're not gonna buy this because it's the most car-like driving vehicle. Even the GM twins or triplets, whatever, they don't drive quite as cumbersome as this vehicle does.
Now the visibility in here is also pretty good at least. You have a really nice commanding view of the road. I mean with eight and a, nine and a half inches of ground clearance, you're basically sitting up higher than everybody else. This reminds me a lot of a Range Rover. It gives you that king of the road feeling. Um, the visibility on the back is good. I mean, you do have blind spot monitoring with a cross traffic alert, which is good. I mean, in, in terms of the safety tech in this car, Toyota's pretty much got it. They just need to kind of update it and give us you know, the lane keep assist and the full speed range adaptive cruise control. But I mean, you're gonna kind of daily drive this and you're gonna like the way it drives but again, I prefer something that feels a little bit lighter, that feels a little bit more nimble, a little bit more car-like. Now, um, this truck chassis has one significant disadvantage, and it's the fuel economy. I've only been averaging around 15 miles to the gallon in this thing, and on a long road trip that I took it in, the best I got was like 16, 17 MPG. Combine that with its small 25-gallon gas tank, and you're only looking at a 300-mile fill-up, even on the highway. That's seriously very disappointing. It's a problem, if I'm being honest. And, you know... In a vehicle like this, where the gas, it guzzles gas, it doesn't have very good range, you're constantly filling it up, it kind of is just like a big like F you uh, to you, and you're just constantly, you feel like you're constantly just paying for gas all the time. But, you know, that's the price to pay. I think Toyota, they need to either improve the gas mileage by like at least, you know, three to five miles per gallon or increase the fuel tank capacity like they did with the Tundra, which had like a 35 gallon gas tank. Overall though, I really like the Land Cruiser. I think that it, it has that sturdy, you know, go anywhere feel. Uh, and I really am looking forward to seeing what Toyota does for the next generation. I have no idea what they're going to do. They haven't really announced anything yet. I think they need to reduce the weight. Um, they need to improve the fuel economy. Um, maybe even go to the twin turbo V6 that they use in the new Lexus LS. I think that would be a great addition. But they do need to keep the towing capacity. They need to improve the space efficiency in this. Although they do want to keep it off-road capable. I would like to see them also add the air suspension that's in the Lexus to this. I just think that for this kind of money, uh, it should have all, if not most, of the features of the Lexus. And they left out the power power tailgate and the air suspension, which I think should have been included. So it's pretty well known that Americans love SUVs. In fact, we love SUVs so much, sales of sedans, coupes, and regular cars have really dropped significantly in the last few years. So what about this big truck-based cross, or SUV segment. Now, I'll, this is a segment that was was dying in the past, but it's really starting to make a resurgence back, especially with Ford coming out with a new Expedition and then strong sales of the GM twins, the Chevrolet Tahoe and the GMC Yukon. So where does that leave the Land Cruiser? Well, if you guys look at sales numbers, Toyota sold roughly about 3,000 units um, for the year in 2016. Those are really paltry numbers, which doesn't surprise me why Toyota actually hasn't refreshed this thing significantly uh, in the last few years. Uh, the Sequoia in general outsells this about four to one, which still only does about 12,000 units annually. Still a pretty paltry number. So what are, what are my final thoughts on the 2018 Land Cruiser? Well, I think this is still one immensely capable truck. It has a really smooth ride quality. It has a burly V8 that offers plenty of power, honestly. It kind of gives you that effortless acceleration you associate uh, with a truck in this segment, especially for the price. Uh, and it has the real four-wheel drive capabilities, the towing abilities, and the ability to, hold, to haul eight people if you guys need to actually do that and tow a lot of stuff because it's got that real truck frame and it just feels really sturdy when you're driving it. Now, unfortunately, those same truck strengths uh, do limit this this vehicle it, it feels kind of cumbersome on the highway with slow steering um, you don't really want to take corners too fast in it, and it seriously guzzles gas when I drove this thing up on a 500 mile road trip the best I could muster was like 300 miles on a tank on the highway and that's kind of concerning when you have you know a 25 gallon gas tank and you're constantly filling it up uh, for that period of time so with that said I would like to see Toyota for the next generation which apparently they're working on really do something to lighten this truck uh, make it more fuel efficient and then do something with the interior to kind of bring it into the 21st century the infotainment system I did have a few issues with it now with all that said how much does this cost to put a Land Cruiser in your driveway well this car starts at $83,600 uh, and this is pretty much well equipped my tester having the rear seat entertainment system pushes it to around $86,000 which again, that's a lot of money. It's about $20,000 more expensive than Toyota's own Sequoia that's fully loaded. And at that point, I'm kind of like, if you really need the space, you might as well just get a Sequoia. So if you want a Land Cruiser, you're specifically going to buy this vehicle. And that's exactly uh, what you're going to get. You're going to get a car that is immensely capable, that has really strong resale value and reliability, and has the ability to really go anywhere you want in the world. At least that's what Toyota likes to say uh, with buying the Land Cruiser name. But anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2018 Toyota Land Cruiser. If you're also looking to see the latest cars, I'm testing. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video. This is the 2018 Toyota Land Cruiser. It's been around the States in some form or another since 1951. Okay, sorry. I lost track of my thoughts. <laughs>
Let me just like relax for a second because I, <laughs> I'm really pissed off that I'm stuck in the sand here. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. Okay. This is the 2018 Toyota Land Cruiser. This truck has been in the States in one form or another since 1951. Notice how I call it a truck because unlike those sissy crossovers that Americans are so in love with, this has been around... God damn it, I lost my train of thought. I'm like distracted because I'm stuck in the sand here, sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh. 